Hi everyone, I'm Gretel and welcome to our channel. If you guys are wondering why Katie isn't in this video, um, it's very NCLEX focused, but she will be missed very much. Um, Katie and I have discussed potentially doing some videos more based on our careers, as well as coming together and doing some challenges. So let us know if you guys would be into that. So let's get started. <laughs> Okay, so my first tip is to be confident. Um, this test, to be successful on it, you really truly need to believe in yourself um, while you're in there. It is very difficult. It gets very difficult even for students who are top in their class. So being confident and staying calm during that test is really crucial. <laughs> Trust. So if you guys do have bad test anxiety, I would highly recommend you guys to go get it checked out. I had really bad test anxiety, that's what I did, and um, I got helped for it, and it really, really makes a huge difference, and I passed my exam, and like I said, you guys just need to be confident when you go in there, so if you do have really bad anxiety, it's important to get it checked out, because you don't want that getting in the way of you potentially being successful in the NCLEX, so yeah, be confident. <laughs> For my next tip, I would recommend a really good review book. Um, there's a lot of different choices. I'm sure there's going to be, your schools are probably going to pay for like, like for example, my school paid for the Hearst review and we used a Hearst book and I know some other schools, I think some other schools I heard they did Kaplan, so I'm not really sure, but um, get a good review book or something that's going to recap everything. The book I recommend, or I did, was the NCLEX RN book, 7th edition. Um, you could actually go with the 7th edition or the newer edition that, I don't know how recently it came out, but it came out not too long ago. Okay, so this is the book I'm talking about. It's kind of teared up a little bit because I used it so much. <laughs> um, it is a thick book. It has a lot of material in it, and I know it could look a little bit intimidating, but I'm going to just tell you guys how I got through it and how I just tackled all this information um, as best I could. So at the end of each chapter, there's questions, about 10 questions. Some chapters went longer, up to like 20 questions. So basically answer those questions before you even read the chapter. And if you get an 85 and above, there's really no reason for you to be reading that chapter. If you get below an 85%, like I said, I highly recommend you to go through that chapter and really just focus on retaining that information. And that's how I got through this book. There's going to be some sections where you just do better than others. And there's going to be certain sections where you're going to struggle on. But like I said, this is actually a very highly requested book. And it's actually the most trusted name in NCLEX review. So I recommend this book. If not the 7th edition, the newer edition. So this is what I recommend. This is what I use. But if you guys want to use an easier book, a skinnier book, it's really up to you. This is just what I used. As my third tip, I would recommend you guys to get a good QBank to prepare for the NCLEX. So right now, what's really popular in my time, uh, I'm not sure how old this video is going to be when you're watching. Uh, UWorld is very popular right now. Um, UWorld necessarily did not work for me, but it did work for the majority of my friends. They loved it and they were successful in the NCLEX. Um, UWorld for me was just, it was just not for me. I didn't think it was anything like the NCLEX. Um, the NCLEX was broad, where UWorld kind of gave me more information that I could get a grip on the answers. Um, but if you ha guys have already purchased UWorld, like I said, it has helped so many of my friends and I'm sure it will help you. So if you have purchased that QBank, go ahead, use it, take advantage of it. Um, if you guys do not want to use UWorld, you don't want to purchase it, or you just don't want to do UWorld, I would highly recommend Board Vitals. That's what I used. It's very um, to the point. Like I said, the English is very to the point. Board Vitals is the same, very to the point. It's just as hard as UWorld, just as hard as the NCLEX. Um, I think I actually did a lot better and I learned a lot more on Board Vitals. So I would recommend Board Vitals if you guys have already done UWorld or you just don't want to purchase UWorld and you want to still get an effective QBank, Board Vitals is the way to go. 
as my fourth tip, um, break days are so important. So I actually place break days as one of my tips just because you do not want to drain yourself. This test is huge. It covers literally four years of nursing school and I know it's a lot of information that you just want to put on your head. But break days are so important because your brain is a muscle and muscles need rest too. Like they're not going to work po properly if you're just literally killing it every single every single day. So like I said, take your break days. Take those very seriously. Really just relax. I did two break days as it got closer. I did one, but I would full on not even open a textbook or even look at a piece of paper on my break days. It's so important. So please take your break days seriously. Going on the break day tip, how long you should be studying. So at first I really drained myself with studying. I used to study all day long and it wasn't beneficial at all. I wasn't really retaining anything. If anything, I was just having like mental breakdowns every three hours. So don't do that to yourself. I recommend usually study four, hour, four hours max. I don't see why you should study more than four hours. Um, the week going up to my exam, I did do like a three hour session in the morning, three hour session in the afternoon. But it was when I had the energy too. Sometimes I just did not have the energy and I didn't drain myself because when you drain yourself, you kind of realize that you don't really retain anything either. So really just go on your time. And my fifth tip. So this is really for people who feel like they need guidance, consider tutoring for the NCLEX. Um, I think me considering tutoring and doing tutoring was probably one of the best choices I've ever made in my life. I came in contact with the best educator and in my life this far, so it's just been a pleasure working with her. Um, she has helped me extremely like emotionally and just getting that knowledge in my head and getting me ready to become a real registered nurse in the field. So if you guys do feel like you need guidance or you need someone to help you or please consider tutoring. I went on Wiseant for my tutoring and I recommend tutors on there. Please do not pay like a hundred plus dollars an hour for a tutor. I would look in a range from 50 to like $70. I think that's a pretty good range for tutoring. I know that there's a lot of tutors out there that charge so much, but like I said, I would just kind of keep it at the 50 to 70 range. If there's even less than that and you think she's a good tutor, like I um, go with that, read the reviews, and yeah, truly, this is just like a side note for people who maybe aren't feeling their best, they're not in the best place, and they just feel like they need um, someone there, I would recommend tutoring. Okay guys, so this is the end of this video. I hope you guys enjoyed, and I really hope my tips are helpful towards you guys. Um, I know this test is so hard, it's so difficult, trust me. I, even thinking about how difficult this journey was, sometimes I get kind of like emotional about it because it's really hard, it's a hard test and you guys are going to be okay. You guys are gonna be amazing RNs in the future and this is just an obstacle you need to get over. So good luck to all of you guys, bye.